Hey everyone, we're Red Donkey Projections. I'm Eric and we have Lucas as always. Hey everyone. So today we're going to be filling out our bi-weekly presidential election prediction. We'll be going state by state, talking about the battleground states and see who gets to 270. And with that being said, let's get right into it. Let's start off by putting in our safe states. We'll not, we will not be discussing these. Um, because they are kind of, uh, what's the word, self-explanatory. Yeah, they don't have a history of being contested that much. Right. Um, that might be it. All right. Let's now do the safe Republican states. We got a lot more of those uh, oops, smaller safe Republican states, as in them. The safe Republican states usually carry less electoral votes. Um, oh, wow, I messed up they carry less electoral votes than the, some of the safe democratic states do. Um, yeah, we we do have a, a couple of uh, likely states that we're not putting in right now. Um, I think that should be, is that it? Alabama. Okay, that does look to be it. Um, Let's put it in the likely states now. Alaska, there is potential that the vote could be under a 15-point margin for Trump. Same for Montana. Um, we're seeing that as well in Missouri, Mississippi, South Carolina, for sure. It's only a six-point margin there, I believe, for, uh, for President Trump. But I think that should be it for the safe um, Republican states. All right. Potentially Kansas. We're going to keep it as safe for now. But we, we are seeing some trends there to the left of it. All right. Let's head to the state, the, the likely Democratic states. We are moving New Mexico now to likely after looking at all the data and you know all the demographics analysis. We are going to move this one to likely. We had it safe before. We're moving to likely now. Colorado will continue to be likely. Nevada will also be likely. Um, polling does overestimate the Republicans here, so um, <clears throat> Biden's lead of about six is pretty good, I think. Um, New Hampshire likely as well. Polling data, um, demographics. Still a, you know, likely stand yeah. went there. Um, As I said in my previous video, um, there are actually quite a few rural counties in New Hampshire, but it's just the cities where, you know, for example, Dartmouth University is and Portsmouth and I forgot the cap of New Hampshire again for the second day. Concord. 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 Yes, right. So those cities as Car uh, Concord and where Dartmouth is and Portsmouth, they do carry a lot more weight. Right. And Virginia is also likely... GOP is not doing well in Virginia. It used to be a swing state. 2008, it was very close. Well, I don't want to say very close, but it was it was very contested. Uh, it is no longer contested anymore uh, in Virginia. All right. Um, I think we are going to put Michigan also as, um, as a likely state. From what we've been seeing, um, um, yeah, I, I think that we're going to continue to put this one as likely. Last, when it flipped in 2016, that was like, you know, the once in a lifetime type of thing. Um, and it only went to Trump by 0.22. So that's still a very narrow margin. So it flipping is, should be no surprise here. We think that a higher African-American and a higher African-American turnout would benefit Joe Biden because uh, um, African-Americans do tend to vote for the Democratic candidate. We'll put that one as likely for now. And I think that should be it, actually. Yeah. Okay. That looks to be it. Um, heading now to the. Um, Wait, this. I think you forgot Maine Allstate. That is also. Oh, oops. Yeah, Maine Allstate will also be a likely margin. Um, we, uh, yeah, Hillary Clinton is really bad here. Um, like absolutely bad. But Biden will probably be able to flip the, the Allstate back um, with increased turnout from the first district. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm debating about Minnesota between moving into lean or like keeping us likely. I think I want to go with likely, but Eric, what do you think of this one? Yeah. Um, polling has slumped for Biden a bit. It was in the high four range, which comparing to what he was at before, which is plus 10, it literally looks like a, a plateau of, yeah, it was, yeah, at four at one point, but now he's kind of rebounded to six. Some pollsters came out um, that did put Biden up by quite a significant number. So right now I think he's at exactly six. Yep, he's at exactly six. I, you know, these, although these polls show how he's kind of in quotes rebounded, this isn't, 
I don't think a likely area for now. This is pretty temporary. I think we should bump Minnesota down to a lean. Interesting. Um, yeah, you know, the George Floyd protest epicenter here, um, according to some data, we saw a lot of increased voter registration during, you know, the, that period of time from like June, I believe. A lot of new people voted, registered to vote. Um, I think, you know what, you're right. Let's, let's move it down to lean, but this really is on the fence um, between likely and lean. Potentially, Michigan is also, yeah, Michigan's also on the fence right now. We'll stick with likely, but it very well could turn into lean um, pretty soon. So that's interesting. We got to keep an eye on that one. All right, let's now head to the um, other lean Democratic states. Mm-hmm. I think Arizona now is lean. Um, from what we've seen in the polls, we did see some new polls that did generally favor Biden in Arizona. We saw the recent ones from Fox News: nine points, ten points. He's not going to win at nine or ten points, um, but this is a good sign for Biden to be up four points here, 4.6 points, yeah. Especially in a state like Arizona, which I have said countless times, used to be a very Republican state, but that is quickly changing, and it, this shows. Right. All right. Let's 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 flip back to the, the Rust Belt now. Let's let's look at Wisconsin. Wisconsin, we're seeing protests in Kenosha. Um, Eric, why don't you talk about Wisconsin? Yeah, so as we know, um, Jacob Blake here uh, was shot seven times, and he is now being treated at the hospital. He is paralyzed. Um, This once again sparked outrage from the Democratic Party, and civil unrest broke out in Kenosha County. Um, In fact, both candidates, Donald Trump and Joe Biden, did visit Kenosha, and they both addressed different parts of the situation. Donald Trump did talk about more of the violence itself, And Joe Biden talked about um, the police brutality and the racism that we see throughout the country. So very uh, two different points of view. Um, The people of Wisconsin did attend Biden's speech today, and maybe that will help Wisconsin's margins. Wisconsin is a very good state right now comparing to what was going on here in 2016. So I think I can put Wisconsin at a lean. That seems fair. Right. And I don't think the outrage was just from the Democratic Party. I think it was from a lot of people in general that we saw yeah. in Wisconsin. Correct. Um, all right. Let's actually look at the polls real quick. I know that we don't base our predictions solely off the polls, but it's important to check. Yeah, 7.2 points. That's a that's a pretty large margin. From what yeah. We, yeah, we got a bunch of polls here yesterday. Fox all News, right. yeah, those A-minus pollsters put Wisconsin up by eight. Um, seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, especially from that pollster, A-minus. All right. Um, Let's now head to the state of Pennsylvania now. Let's quickly check the polls here. We did a polls video yesterday where the map was solely based off the polls. We did see some narrowing, actually. Um, although Quinnipiac did have Biden up by eight, Rasmussen is a terrible pollster that always tends to favor the president. In fact, they had a poll out, I believe, a few days ago that showed Trump in the positive um, approval rating-wise, which no other pollster has done that ever. But, yeah. yeah. As we see yesterday, an A-plus pollster, Monmouth University, did put Biden up by, as Lucas will come back to the poll, 1%. Yep. Yeah, so this should be a sign that Biden should reach out to Pennsylvania a bit more. It does get pretty divided. East Pennsylvania leans more to the left. Central Pennsylvania leans more to the right. So Biden does have to reach out to those undecided and, you know, on the fence voters. Right, but I do think it will probably be lean at the end of the day. It'll probably be between somewhere between one and five points. I, I think he'll probably win by more than a point. I, I think that's definitely possible. So this is the Rust Belt now, and that gives Biden the victory, even uh, without, oh, sorry, with the addition of Arizona. You don't need Pennsylvania to win, I believe. Let me just show. No, never mind. 269, I think it does go to Trump. So anyways, um, with that, um, Trump, uh, sorry, Biden has won the election. Let's now head to other states. Um, North Carolina, we were initially pondering changing it to tilt R, although we did get some new polls today from Quinnipiac, you know, sorry, not Quinnipiac, uh, Monmouth University. A plus pollster. An A plus pollster showing, um, gosh, it's not going to, it's not going to cooperate today. Uh, North Carolina, we saw some new polls here showing Biden up by two points in all three polls. Um, mm-hmm. That is a pretty narrow margin. Two points is not too big. And Fox News did show Biden up by four. But um, I don't think it's enough to swing this to either side right now. I would put this one as a pure toss-up. I, I think it could really go in either way um, this time. 
Yeah, this is the state at the moment that is most likely to, you know, live right. and be right. on the fence like a lot. Right. Um, yeah, North Carolina does have a pretty high African-American electorate who do usually turn out for the Democratic candidate. Um, I've got some big cities in North Carolina as well. So it really could come down to multiple factors here, which way it goes. All right, heading now to Florida. Um, this one, I think, wow, 3.3. .3. This one really has narrowed. Yeah, at one point in time, it was at you know, six points. Before, it used to be at seven when we made our video, um, our collaboration with Ethan Ablogi, um, the polls showed Biden up by seven, and now he's at three. This is actually pretty concerning. I didn't even see this polling average. Uh, I guess this was updated today. But, you know, um, Biden is potentially losing ground here in Florida. I, again, his high point has kind of ceased as of, you know, a few weeks ago. So Biden does really have to do some reaching out to undecided voters here. Right. Eric, what would you, what would you put Florida as? Um, so at the moment, we have it as lean. I think for now, we should keep it as lean. Um, polls do still tend to favor Biden. I think tilt is a bit um, too not generous to Joe Biden. He has been holding on to Florida pretty well. And I think he's going to continue to hold on to it as of today, which is August 3rd. So, right. And yeah, I agree with you on that. All right. So let's now head to some of the other states here. Let's head to Texas now. Um, Texas is a huge prize if Biden's able to flip it, which looking at it right now, it's not looking too great for him. Um, 1.5 point lead for Trump. Morning Consult released two new polls showing Trump up by just one point. Um, interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Public policy polling um, has Biden up one. Global Strategy Group has Biden up two. So generally, um, I think that this probably will go to um, Trump at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But he, yeah, he should be concerned as of the margins at the moment. Yes, we don't think he's, uh, Biden's going to flip the state, but Trump is losing ground. And clearly, we see the past few polls not looking so good for him. And a polling average of just 1.5 in the state of Texas is not looking too good for Donald Trump. He really has to come back here and reinforce his base. Right. And I, I definitely agree with you on that. Let's now check out the state of Georgia. Georgia is definitely um, been interesting in that in a period of time, we had Biden up leading by, you know, one point, one point, two points. That's since uh, dropped to now a Trump lead by one point. Landmark Communications has Trump up by seven. Um, that is a relatively high undecided number, though. Um, but I do think that this probably will go to Biden, I'm sorry, Trump, will probably put this one as uh, lean as well. It's about the same level as Texas. Maybe, I think Georgia might vote to the, to the, to the left of Texas this time. That's definitely possible. It happened last time too. Um, Georgia went to Biden, by, to, went to Trump by about six points, I believe, six, five, five to six points, somewhere around there. All right, heading now to Iowa. Iowa, Iowa is a more conservative area. Um, it went to Biden. Sorry. Oh, gosh. I can't talk today. It went to Obama in 2008 and 2012. But it went to Trump by nine points in uh, 20, 2016. I think it was like 9.5 points, which is huge for a state like that, that went to Obama already. Currently in the polls, we have Trump up by uh, 1.7 points. This must be an outlier poll. Um, I don't think Biden have, really has a shot at this. Strange so I, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking about lean as well. Strange to see Iowa's polling average higher than Texas. Yeah, yeah. it is. Considering that before, Texas used to be such a uh, safe Dem uh, Republican stronghold. Yep. So it's interesting to see how things have changed. Ohio now, I think that Biden has lost his lead here now. We made a video a couple, oh, wow, by a lot, actually. We made a video uh, recently about how Biden was leading for a blip of time. That has since decreased, and his lead here is larger than his lead in Iowa. How interesting. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go with uh, lean for this one as well. <clears throat> the four classic lean states remain lean. However, at one point in time, we did have Ohio at tilt and Georgia at tilt and Texas at tilt at one time. That, that is, it's faded. Uh, Biden's lead definitely is 
Um, narrow, it has narrowed up, but this has been expected. He was at his high point. Um, Trump was at his low point. Um, I think that that thing has that has shifted now um, in uh, Trump's favor. Heading now to Nebraska's second district. Um, I'm not even going to show the polls here because they were the only conducted two polls. But this is the more densely populated area of uh, Nebraska. They have cities like Omaha here, and we do project a Biden victory. I think we're going to still probably put this one as lean. It's either lean or tilt right now. Um, we are lacking some data here. <clears throat> Sorry, we are lacking some data here. Um, what do you think about this, Eric? Mm -hmm. I would also put right in between lean and tilt, but like in such a safe area such as Nebraska, um, I would put it as tilt. I'm not sure. And again, lacking um, the data from Nebraska housing situations, but I would put it somewhere around tilt. All right, that works too. Um, but the, yeah, it's, it's on the fence. And then Eric, you can discuss uh, main second district, our final district. Mm -hmm. Yep, so this is a large congressional district, as you guys see on the map. Um, this means that it's not that populated, which means that they usually lean Republican, according to our rule of thumb. We would usually put this as a lean Republican area, and that has not changed. This should be um, a pretty clean sweep for Donald Trump, and he should have not too many troubles taking this district. You know, funny enough, though, Biden actually does lead in the polls like, or in uh, Maine's second district by three points, I believe. So that's yeah. interesting to keep in mind. But again, this is a very rural area. Um, I think that Trump can probably pick this up in 2016. He won this by a pretty large margin, although Obama, I think, was able to carry it. Um, but again, Obama was that different kind of candidate. He was like an extremely good um, election candidate. And um, he, he basically swept his first election, won his second election to pretty uh, good margin as well. So that's, that is our final map. It's going to be 319 to 204. That is a drop from, uh, from 334 because we are going to – we have flipped North Carolina back to the toss-up column. Yep. We have to keep an eye on North Carolina for sure. Maybe make a video tomorrow on, on North Carolina because we got to keep an eye on this one. Mm -hmm. Hillary was projected to win this. She ended up losing it. Um, but anyways, that is the end of the video for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. If you like our content, please hit subscribe. We'll see you in our next episode tomorrow. See ya.